taking into account all of the evidence I've looked at, which has been almost entirely from peer-reviewed scientific papers and official government websites, um, my opinion is, is that this entire pandemic is a completely manufactured crisis. And, you know, we've heard this type of information before. Some would call it conspiratorial, some would say it's rhetoric. But look, right now, you would have to be blind and deaf and dead and buried six foot under to not recognize that what is happening is not normal and is not justified. In other words, there's no evidence of anyone dying from any novel illness. And so what I think is going on, if you look at how the responses and government policies are changing, what we're seeing is essentially that we're having our rights taken away from us. This whole conspiracy, the whole cult way of manipulating society is psychologically. It's a psychological game. So we don't have the right to leave our homes uh, at our will. We don't have the right to assemble. We don't have the right to travel. Um, we are asked to keep distance from each other. We're asked to cover our face, which is a major barrier to communication. You know, when there's a few of you, and compared with the global population, they are a very few. You can't control people physically. You can do it in a certain area through, the, through troops and the army, and what they want to do is do it absolutely through connecting AI to the human brain. But for the moment, they can't. How you, how you have to do it is you have to um, program people's perceptions because from perceptions comes behavior. It's a real simple thing. Your perceptions become your behavior. Um, and I see that people are becoming afraid of each other. Um, we have uh, policies in uh, the financial sector uh, where all of these businesses were instructed to close their operations. We have the supply chain for our food distribution systems being shut down and farmers are asked to destroy meat and crops. Um, we have uh, the Federal Reserve is uh, printing money like it's going out of style. They're buying up corporate debt. They're buying up real estate. Um, all of these things fit to a situation that um, is in line with a sort of what might be known as a globalist agenda. It seems like an overkill to my logical brain. What are you actually describing if we break it down? You're, Hunger Games. you're describing mass. Um, how's the rest? And you go one step back, where do your perceptions come from? They come from information received. So if you control the information, the constant narrative, um, and most people just believe it because that's all they hear, repetition is a wonderful, magnificent form of mind control. You control the information, you overwhelmingly control perception among those that don't question, and from perception you control um, behavior. And what they're manipulating now, as they do all the time, but here is a wonderful, um, potent example of it is they're manipulating this what appears to be this innate human trait of fear of death which is an expression of another innate human trait which is fear of the unknown and the thing that people have to remember is that to be aware of danger is very critical but don't allow what you're fearful for or what's been painted as a source of danger because that's the diversion look for the real danger they they're basically telling you that look there's a ferocious dog that's the danger. That's a COVID-19. It's barking outside your door or it's a pack of dogs and it's barking outside your door and don't open the door, stay inside. And I'm telling you that if you open that door, not only are you going to find that there's no dog, it's not even a poodle. It's a tape recording of a dog. It's a tape recording of a pack of dogs barking. But the real danger, the real danger is a saber toothed tiger coming behind you. And I think uh, one document that you can look at that outlines this pretty well is uh, from the United Nations, uh, originally called Agenda 21, but it's been change to Agenda 2030. And then you have now all of this talk about um, basically using technology to spy on people. And I'm, I'm talking about what they refer to as contact uh, tracing, which sounds somewhat innocuous. The term was uh, originally coined in 1931. And uh, what this is, is basically um, trying to coerce us or perhaps even require us to put 
some kind of tracking app on our cell phones that will um, contain all kinds of personal data about our health, uh, about where we go and what we do and who we associate with. And um, this, all of these things seem to um, be moving towards uh, control of the people, like government control of the people that they can track them, they can take away their rights, and they can grant privileges based on the degree that we might cooperate with what they want us to do. So what a pandemic does, what they call a pandemic, that was declared by Ted Ross at the World Health Organization anyway, what a pandemic does is um, it kicks in this survival mechanism. And it means that not only will you accept authority imposing tyranny, you will demand that authority imposes tyranny. It goes deeper. It comes back to our friend Bill Gates because his investments in pharmaceutical companies, his investments in the WHO, his investments in the CDC, his funding, it goes so deep, it goes so wide, and m most of this is public information. And this information is coming out. Um, you know, the, the thing that keeps coming back to my mind about uh, Bill Gates in this arena is uh, from a TED talk that he gave, where he made a statement uh, to the effect of, through vaccines and family planning, we could reduce the world's population by 15%. And 15% of the world's population is somewhere around 1 billion people, billion with a B. And, you know, certainly he comes from a family of eugenicists, and uh, that's well established in the historical record. So one could speculate that this is some kind of eugenics uh, agenda that he has uh, in mind. But he certainly made other statements recently that basically we will not be able to get back to any kind of normalcy in our day to day lives. And he specifically mentioned things like uh, concerts or sporting events at arenas where you have large gatherings of people until, you know, every single person is vaccinated. So there's clearly he has a very strong motivation and incentive uh, to roll out vaccinations. And I think through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that has been their principal aim in terms of their, you know, so-called charitable endeavors is to, uh, you know, vaccinate everyone in the world uh, for all of the uh, so-called communicable diseases. Because what's going to happen, they're going to give you vaccines that's going to make more people sick. While we're in the homes, while we're hidden, they don't want people to see what the truth is. The truth is that everything's fine. The truth is that people aren't dropping dead. The truth is that the hospitals are idle. Ambulances are sitting there. Paramedics are playing cards. They're bored. Doctors are being laid off. Nurses are being furloughed. That's the truth. And my agenda is very simple, is to inform people because you know as well as I and anybody that's of reasonable intellect understands that the only way that you can control people is by keeping them in ignorance. But as soon as a person becomes empowered with knowledge, the one thing is that nobody can control you once you are aware. You cannot be victimized once you're aware and once you've been aware.